Welcome back everyone. This is game number three of this best of three semi-finals. It's the ace game and what a series it's been so far. Things looking incredibly good on both sides in each of these games. I have no way, no way of knowing which way the series is going to go and it has got to be fantastic. Starting in the lower left hand position of Frost we have the blue Terran player. He represents Team Acer, none other than MMA. And his opponent to the top left, the orange Protoss player, representing my insanity, bringing him back after an early defeat to level it out in game number two. It's Stardust. Who's going to be able to take this third game? The important one, the one that decides who advances into the finals doubling their prize money at minimum and who goes home with those 75 euros and a round of four finish. We'll find out soon. Both these two opening very similar to what they've done in game number one. Stardust gonna get the gate then the gas. Meanwhile MMA has both options available to him. In game one he of course went for the reactor into the double reaper. Game number two he just got the single reaper down into a lot of marine production. Game one was substantially longer oh sorry game two was substantially longer than game number one and that was mainly on Stardust side being a lot more controlled and a lot more balanced in how he engaged. He wasn't over committing, he wasn't taking huge risks he was just waiting for the right moment to engage. Allowed MMA to be greedy when he wanted to be. And if he did that, things were going to be very cool. MMA switching things up this game though. Not going to be going for the Reaper. Instead starts the quick factory up. No reactor yet, but may see one after the second marine comes down. It depends precisely what MMA is going to be planning on doing. He could also get the fast starport, get a couple of Hellions out, a couple of Marines out, and go for the drop play up to the main while running the Hellions in to the natural. Could also go for some Widow Mines. There was a lot of success in game number one from that. Stardust positioning a pylon right to the edge of his main. This gives him advance notice of anything like Medivacs flying through, but also gives him a spot to hide some tech if he wants to. Widow Mines are on the way out, Starport coming through as well. So it is going to be some more Widow Mine drops coming down from MMA. If he starts getting that all out and Stardust doesn't have detection like he lacked in game number one, it's going to be really successful for MMA. So Stardust, for his sake, needs to get out some form of detection. Ideally a robotics facility and the observer. No sign of what Stardust wants to do yet. There we go. Dropping him down now, Robo Facility. This is great news for Stardust. He should have detection, which means this Widow Mine drop won't be as effective as it was in map one, just purely because of the build order that Stardust is going for. Stardust's natural is now up. He's adding in a couple more Stalkers. Whereas MMA, he's still sitting on one base. He's gone for this very early play. The one Widow Mine actually, so it's not going to be pure Widow Mine drop. Instead, getting a few more Hellions into the mix. Going to be looking to pressure nicely. One Widow Mine going to get dropped down. The Hellions poking in the front. A Reactor coming on that barracks. And the natural base getting taken. So MMA not all in here. But he is looking to get a decent amount of harassment achieved. Robo and Forge on their way. Drop now coming forward. There's two Stalkers here at the moment. Plus that Mothership Core. With enough energy to focus overcharge. Quick little burrow comes down, the Hellions trying to poke and prod. This Widow Mine plays an important role at trying to zone out a lot of what Stardust has. If either of these Stalkers get too close to the Widow Mine, they get one shot in. And that's something that really Stardust cannot afford to let happen. The Medorak providing ample amounts of healing, but because the Observer's out, Stardust denies that Widow Mine from getting any kills. The Foden Overcharge prevents the Hellions from getting much damage at the front. And Stardust defends that without taking any losses at all. That's of course great news for MMA. 
Oh, for Stardust, rather. MMA, not so much, because he's invested a lot here. Delayed his natural base significantly, and he achieved nothing with it. It's very rare that you will not kill a single thing with an aggressive opening like that. Whereas Stardust, arguably the only thing that he lost there is the fact that he's made a cannon in his main and a cannon at his natural. So 300 minerals worth of investment. But he can afford to do that because by going for that build, MMA delayed his tech, uh, delayed his economy. And as a result, that 300 minerals is more than made up for by having this natural base already mining and the near, well, the 15 odd work elite. It definitely makes up for that. Colossi are going to be making the field yet again, Blink being researched early on, and the armor upgrades coming through from Stardust here. Armor a great choice up against Terran in most situations because of the high attack speed and low damage per hit of Marines. Armor reduces their damage significantly, and as a result their damage per second hugely. A few more gateways being added in here by Stardust. No sign of a third base game taken by him yet, and MMA is checking for that. This Hellion mainly just to get a good look at what kind of army composition there is, but more importantly, if a third is getting taken or trying to be taken. Because without that third being there, it suggests to MMA that Stardust is going to be applying a lot of pain quickly. And six additional gates coming through really does expand on that. There's going to be seven gateways worth of production with Colossi, with plus one armor, and also with Blink. That is a lot of investment. Stardust really playing things as close to the mark as he can. A scan came down there for MMA, but it's actually at his own base in order to pick off an observer, deny some vision. Whereas if we look at what MMA knows about Stardust, he knows there's a Robo and a Forge. Doesn't know about the additional gates and doesn't know about the robotics facility or the Twilight Council. All he knows about for sure is that there wasn't a third base when he last checked. Double drop though, getting queued up now, and this is where MMA is going to be trying to get some damage done. Stardust though is adequately defended against this. He needs to realise that he's got one gateway not warped into a warp gate. There we go. And now this is where the unit production is going to start massively ramping up. Second Colossus about to pop out, the first being hidden back at home. A Stalker leading the charge just to pick off any scouting units that may be about. Doesn't want to reveal this strategy until the last moment. Stardust is committing heavily to this aggression. Quick scan from MMA. Did it see the Colossi? That's the important thing. Was it spotted? Second star pool coming down, so yes, it must have been. Two Vikings queued up. Stardust has been revealed. He knows what's coming now. But is it too late? Stardust warping in a couple more units. He's got a probe. Oh no, actually, never mind. A probe coming out on the map in order to start placing these proxy pylons, but the push is starting. Extended Thermal Lance, nearly done. Plus one attack, nearly finished. Plus one armor, already completed. The upgrades are going to be pretty damn level, actually. Um, slightly one to start us with 1-1 one, one up against 1-0 for MMA. But MMA does not have any Vikings yet. Producing the first ones now. A supply block for MMA as well. Just adds a little bump. But no, as we saw previously, Stardust not being greedy, not rushing to try and take a quick win, not rushing to try and end out the game prematurely. Instead, happy to bide his time and take the right engagement. He's even going to expand to that third. So this isn't all in, it's just very aggressive. The third, not going to be too much later than this active third from MMA. It has been producing SCVs for a while, giving MMA a three worker lead. But three workers isn't that substantial. Obviously with the three mules as well it gets a bit more significant. But MMA still has to contend with this very scary army barreling towards him and picking off the odd worker. More Vikings coming through. Great scan from MMA gets a complete look at everything here. He's going to be most interested in how many Colossi there are and how many Stalkers there are and whether or not his Vikings are going to be able to trade well. Stardust playing very similar to game number two though, waiting, getting out those four colossi, and just being quite patient. The difference is the third base for MMA is significantly later and there's less vikings on the field. This is actually probably a better situation now for Stardust. Gonna be looking to take out those rocks, another scan comes down, 
MMA really needs to know exactly if and when Stardust tries to move up and where he tries to move up. The army positioning critical to the next engagement. And arguably, whoever wins the next straight up fight will win the game. Stardust, not overcommitted to this though. Third base now up, still producing probes. And MMA doesn't know about this third base yet. Stardust knows about the third of MMA though. So he's aware that his opponent has expanded and that his resources and army supplies are going to be less because of that. MMA, as far as he knows, this is all in. And Stardust is going to go for it. The Colossi taking a bit of damage, but none of them falling yet. All five still up, one now falling. SCV is getting pulled. Stardust surrounding all of this infantry, annihilating it, and a GG straight there. Stardust takes down MMA in a 2-1 victory to advance forward to the finals of Go for SC2 Monthly. Congratulations to Stardust. He played that beautifully.